Hello, we're at the Wallace Collection in London, where nine artists are about to paint three famous faces. They're not always using paint either. One's using charcoal, one's using wax, and one has thrown the canvas away entirely and is using a tile that he bought at the local DIY store. Joan, I love you. Get on with the programme. Welcome to Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year. This year, the Wallace Collection in London is home to the heats of the competition. And today, nine new artists tackle the portraits of the great and the good, of the big and the small screen. She's got a really interesting face, really beautiful. Over four hours, they must showcase their talent to the judges. Art historian Kate Bryan, award-winning artist Taishan Schierenberg, and independent curator Kathleen Soriano. So I think we go with those three, can't yeah. we, for sure? They just take all the attention, don't yeah, they? Yeah, the strong absolutely. Painting. All for the chance to win a £10,000 commission to paint the portrait of one of our best-loved broadcasters, Graham Norton, for the permanent collection of the National Gallery of Ireland. I mean, sort of fiddling, whether it's good fiddling or bad fiddling, I don't know. But whose keen eye and masterful brush strokes? Maybe a gamble, but what the heck? <laughs> we'll see them through to the semi-final. Someone came up to me and said, Bill's about to start waxing. Oh, about to wax. I nearly arrived in a robe. <laughs> Among the artists who have made it to today's heat, six are amateur. Robin Boner Law, Michaela Walker, Bill Bone, Millie Midgley, Harry Wills, and Amit Vadha. I've been just constantly just painting in my head. Even last night, I couldn't even sleep. I, can, I think I was just dreaming painting. And three are professional artists. Christopher Banahan, Emily Oni Palmer, and Phoebe Cripps. I think with the time, it's really good to try these limits. It can, can push me to maybe try a new technique and maybe discover something. As the art is set up, the judges take a look at the self-portraits they entered with. Having only seen a digital version, confronting the real thing can be a bit of a revelation. So, we begin. I find this a bit overwhelming, to be honest. Um, Shall we stand back a bit? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. What was great about this, though, I think, is a lot of portraits submitted had artists standing at their easels with their brushes, but here she's taken, actually, the medium of the paint and is smearing it all over herself because, actually, she's the portrait. And this is our more traditional School of Florence painting, isn't it? That sort of very capable, very good portrait painting. What I really loved about this was this, the intensity of that gaze and that expression, that you really were transported somewhere with them. It feels like a scene from a novel, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. While this is their first encounter with most artists, the judges are very familiar with one of them, who took part in the last series. Let me take you for a little walk down memory lane. <laughs> So this is Bill. We've got that same brilliant pointillism style he uses, but actually you can see he's progressed, hasn't he? You're absolutely right. It felt before like the portrait was imposed on the surface, whereas now it feels like the portrait is emerging from mm. the surface. So there's maybe yeah. more of a subtlety in the way in which he's constructing the outline of the image. To me, it's like this idea that we're all composed of all these atoms. Totally. Uh, you know, we're all, all, you know, we've all got stardust <laughs> in here. We just happen to have gathered a few of them together to make this individual. Yeah. And finally... It's perfect selfie generation stuff, isn't it? It's got this sort of very youthful, fun, you know, dismissive attitude. As a sort of middle-aged painter, I look at this and I think, <laughs> wow, that is cheeky. And using photography and not being ashamed of it, that's, you're right, it's been very honest and saying, this is, I'm doing this and I'm of this generation, <laughs> I don't care what you think. I hope they can bring some of that kind of cheeky spirit today. Well, we'll soon find out. I think everyone has worked looks so amazing. It's so diverse and so different. I feel everyone's got their own style, which is really interesting. It's a bit daunting, actually. 
Amateur artist Amit Varda is from Hayes in Middlesex. After completing an art foundation course at Central St. Martins in London, he went on to study for a degree in animation. Eager to loosen up his style, he's been experimenting on different surfaces and has painted his self-portrait on a floor tile. In my self-portrait, I want it to look quite regal, quite elegant, just quite fragile, which I kind of thought the tile looked. But I decided to work on oil painting paper today because it's slightly quicker to work on and I practiced on the tile, but I couldn't give the tile any justice in four hours. Oh, what am I doing? OK, focus. Sorry, I've just seen your um, brushes. Actually, that's only about a third of my collection, really? but... Oh, wow, you've got a feather as well. Yeah, you, n you never know. The artists have almost everything they need. Paints, canvases, brushes, even wax. The only thing missing now is someone to paint. So artists, you're wondering who is our sitter today. Well, let me tell you, I often watch Sky Atlantic's Hotel Secret screaming, this is the best job in the world. And your sitter is the man who has that job. He's also a fabulous and much loved actor. He's Richard E. Grant. <laughs> Richard's career has spanned over 30 years and his more recent roles have seen him join the cast of some of television's most popular shows, from Downton Abbey to Girls to Game of Thrones. Hi, what's your name? Rob. How old are you? 20. Hi, I'm not 22. How old are you? 58. I'm 59. How old are you? I'm 59. I'm 59. Snap. We both look great on it, don't you think? I do. That's the joy of not having a proper job. <laughs> are you thinking, oh, God, I hope they don't point out my dot, dot, dot? I have a face like an undertaker's assistant. <laughs> Big slab, and unless I smile, I look miserable. As presenter of the Great British Bake Off, your sitter is no stranger to celebrating creative talent, so please welcome Sue Perkins. A writer, actor and presenter, Sue's TV roles have introduced her to everything from baking to super eating and even conducting orchestras. Welcome. Thank you very much. How does, does it feel? How does it feel? It feels good. I'm going to do this a lot. Is that OK? Oh, no, it'd be wonderful <laughs> okay. for painting. I think the challenge is to capture something of your personality, which is already restless. Well, that's why they've brought the nail gun, I think, just so that they can make sure they're <laughs> static for a while. Um, I'm going to give them the best sort of still Susan I can, and um, we'll see how it goes. Artist, your sitter today is an extremely talented and versatile actress. She's the fabulous Nina Sosanya. <laughs> Star of W1A and Last Tango in Halifax, Nina can tackle anything from Shakespearean drama to TV satire. <laughs> Nina, welcome. Thank you. Please, your throne. Thank you. Is there a level of performance in sitting to be painted, do you I think? I have no idea yet. I'll find out. This is your first time yeah, ever? Yeah, I posed for a sculptor once, mm. and that was more to do with sort of torso twisting, and I was on a Lazy Susan. Were you really? <laughs> yeah. No. Like a piece of cheese. Right, we're going to hand you over to the artist as to how you might sit. So what do you think, guys? However you feel comfortable, really. All right. Yeah, yeah it's four hours. I guess you're going to have to be comfortable. This might be it. Then. Yeah, you very naturally put an arm on the armchair. So I think if you have an arm up... And maybe and pick a spot where you're just looking at, so... OK, I'm a face. If I face sort of there, then I'm sort of giving everyone sort of equal access to the full... Full horror. face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just working on the face, so... Yeah, over I'm to just going to be working on the face too. Just the face? Yeah, so you've got to come so up with a good expression that you can keep. OK. It'd be hard to keep up a smile, though, until four hours. <laughs> See, that's, well, that's nice. Actually, that's just how good. you are yeah. is really nice. Yeah. Artists, your challenge is about to begin. You have four hours to complete your portraits, and the time starts now. Right, this is where I'm going. 
Whether it's to help decide composition or secure an accurate likeness, eight of our nine artists are all starting their portraits with a photograph before putting any kind of mark on the canvas. If you could find one with a jawline, that would be amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. Just gotta wait for Photoshop to open up. Ha ha ha, come on now. Since graduating in graphic design from Falmouth, Robin Bona Law works a 54 hour week in his local North Devon pub. With his photorealist style and not used to having a sitter, Robin's relying on his standard setup to help him today. This is actually yeah. Photoshop, isn't it? Yeah, well, I did graphic design at university, so Photoshop's my baby. It's like, oh. um, the colours on the screen aren't necessarily what I'll put on the page. But for the drawing, it's what you need, yeah? Yeah, I need better reference points, so I've got my dots, just to... It's interesting, yeah, because you say that you've trained in graphic design, there is definitely a kind of very design-like quality to what you've done so far. Yeah, I did fine art for university and then went into graphic design. I always love the problem-solving aspects of graphic design, but then, like, I, always love, I just love painting. By placing a grid over a photograph and drawing an identical grid on the canvas, artists can plot their portrait to ensure everything's positioned correctly. But it won't work unless it's spot on. I've made one of the grid boxes too narrow, and so it's, it's not a square. At just 17, Harry Wills is the youngest artist ever to take part in Portrait Artist of the Year, and he's preparing to take his AS levels a week after the competition. He mainly paints during art lessons at school, so he's considerably less experienced than the others here today. You're taking your time? Yeah, I managed to mess up the grid a little bit, but I think it's fine. But i just got to keep it in mind. Given that you're right at the beginning, you don't think yeah. you want to redo those sections? Because if you're going to use maths... Yeah, exactly. You want to get no, the maths right. To, yeah. It's like the school exams, the working yeah. out is really important. Yeah. This is the longest I've sat still since I was born. So tiring. I've sat before. It's hard and you want to go to sleep. I can't paint my mum in the afternoon because I look up at her and she's going... And she makes that face deliberately so that I'm going, OK, we can have a break. Professional artist Phoebe Cripps lives in New Romney in Kent. She developed her more traditional style of painting after studying in Florence. Today, she's the only artist not using a photograph. But her technique for capturing her sitter is a lot more interactive. I've seen that you've been turning away. Do you find that actually helps the process and helps the way the paint comes on? Technically, no, in the sense that they're moving. But it would be what my process would naturally be. I would get more of a connection, and, yeah. and it, I think it translates, hopefully. Yeah. Which portrait artist from history do you love? Where we studied, the sergeant was always the king, because he made it look so easy. <laughs> so. But the sergeant lesson is very important. He makes it look so easy. Lesson it one it is, easy. it's not, not easy. It's yeah. not. The artists are already one hour into their four-hour challenge. I definitely feel like I've got going a bit more, but, I mean, I'm struggling. It's quite a challenge so far. Just getting the likeness down first, and then uh, I'll be a bit more relaxed. Got to not try to get distracted and worry about other people, other people doing, and uh, keep painting. Here at the Wallace Collection in London, our nine artists have been painting sitters Sue Perkins, Richard E. Grant, and Nina Sasanya for just over one hour. And while most artists are content with paints and brushes, one is wielding some less conventional tools of the trade. Someone came up to me and said, Bill's about to start waxing. Bill's about to wax. <laughs> I nearly arrived in a robe. <laughs> is this all about texture? 
pretty much. You really kind of see it once you start to put the paint on. There's like little microscopic dots in there, and I, I want lots of those. I don't want too many big kind of... Big splats. Big splats, yeah. An amateur artist, Bill Bowen, is a website designer for the Welsh Government. He made it to the semi-final of Portrait Artist of the Year 2014, impressing the judges with his unique use of wax and painted dots. But, eager to progress, Bill's been on a bit of a journey with his technique. I noticed, looking at your self-portrait for this, that your style has it's changed, hasn't it? Is. it? Yes, thank you for noticing, yes. No, it has changed, uh, probably because of the show. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Or is that good or bad? I think it's a good thing, yeah, yeah. So did you discard the dots? I did for a while. I went through a, a dark phase of no dots. Um, what I like but I'm then, back to the dots again. Because now that it's like the dots have gone away and they've come back they bigger come back and stronger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it difficult to paint a beautiful woman? She's very beautiful, isn't she? It, it kind of is, I suppose, because when well, my painting style is quite patchy, and so I don't do blended skin tones. Michaela Walker is an amateur artist from Edinburgh. She chose to study for a PhD in biochemistry, but when her youngest son turned four, she finally found time to indulge in her love of portraiture. And now you're putting on the blue. I'm just going to try and get some of the background done because, again, that will help me choose my uh, skin tones a wee bit in terms of there will be a little bit of sort of bluish reflection. Now, here, you've got your tablet. How are you using this? Well, I used that for the initial drawing. Right. Uh, and then after that, it's probably going to just get ignored. Actually. We don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, because the colours are so much more vibrant in real life. That's great. Well, on with the blue. Thank you. <laughs> While most artists use a palette to mix the colours before transferring them to the canvas, one artist hmm, can't see the need. I've got these blocks of paint on my canvas. They're going to stay there. I like the history of it. I like uh, incorporating the palette. I think, you know, the, the blobs of paint are, are exciting. Emma Leone Palmer is a professional artist from Surrey. She divides her time between helping in her mum's restaurant and painting in her studio, and her self-portrait was the first in a series that she calls Paint Play. Why did you put the paint on your face? It was a January, and I was thinking, oh, what should I do? So I was in the studio, and I thought, OK, self-portrait. And I just started playing with the paint, and the more I, I looked and played, the, the more interested yeah. I became in it. What's so interesting here is that you've got quite a tight crop here. This is quite small for me. I think this is a good size in the, in the four hours. Exactly. I mean, although it's not as big as you might normally do, actually, in terms of the amount of head you're giving us, it's a lot. Exactly. I mean, it's, a it's monumental, isn't yeah. it? This is annoying, this is annoying, this is annoying. That's really useful. Do you have a Susan and a Sue in you? If someone's calling me Susan, I've done something very wrong. Sue is a restless, moving person. She's very animated. She tried quite hard at the beginning to sit still, but now she's moving quite a lot, you know, dropping her legs. And she's chatting. She's having a really good chat with Phoebe. It's interesting because Phoebe's painting directly her from life, no photograph, whereas the other two artists in the section... Using tablets. ..and they're not having that conversation with her. So it's, it's actually weird. They're all in such close proximity. Completely different approach. If you had to paint Richard, how would you view that as a subject? Would, would it be something you'd be eager to have a go at? I think of the three sitters, he possibly has the most craggy and interesting architecturally. For me, his face, is, it's like a cathedral with all this cragginess, but then the, these beautiful stained glass, icy blue windows. That's a fantastic story. Have you told him? No, I, I, I don't know. know. Casey's, face like Casey's, a cathedral. Uh, yeah. That sounds good. Some people don't like a gothic as a compliment. <laughs> What's interesting is that you're not looked at much by the actual painters. They've taken photographs and are painting from a screen. Something that I was very struck by that David Hockney talked about is that the difference between a photograph, as beautiful or brilliant as they can be, is that it is a second in time. Whereas a portrait, there is time compressed into it. Something happens between you and the artist that isn't 
fixed and no photograph that I've ever seen has conveyed that in the same way. We've got really a very limited range of tones here. Black, ground, blue. Yes. She's in blue. Yes. Is that but a problem? I think, I think, no, I don't think it is a problem, really, because I think for any artist, they're looking far more carefully at colour and light than we ever would, because we make quick decisions with our eyes. OK, you're wearing a pink jacket, but actually the more I look at the shadow and the light, it's filled with different nuances of colours in that range. So I think that the artist will find that difference in amongst the colours. But what you're saying is that we don't look hard enough, do we? No, and I think that's what artists do. It's, um, it's kind of fascinating. And the three different approaches already, without even having seen the canvas, they're all very different. One of the um, artists is apparently using a green colour for my skin at the moment, but we'll see what colour I end up with. <laughs> but I don't mind, if she wants to paint me green, that's fine. She's got a really interesting face, really beautiful, so I'll be, it'll be nice to see how that comes along. Um, and it's nice how the light comes down her face in some different colours. A recent fine art graduate, Millie Midgley works as a teaching assistant at her local primary school and paints in her spare time. With its texture and fine detail, her self-portrait took 50 hours to complete. Do you know, I know that you know what you're doing. Do you know why I know? How? because that, you're painting that green, and this yeah. is blue. So yeah. there must be a reason. <laughs> yeah. Why is this green? I always use green when I do skin colours. It's always like a translucency, you get through the skin. Well, I can see that it looks promising, <laughs> but I can see that it's got so. a long way to go because yeah. she's not green. No. <laughs> I've used a grainy piece of wood uh, which uh, in the end will bring out some of the texture which kind of suits Richard's face. He's like me, he's getting on a bit and yes, he's got a lot of character's face. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> Christopher Banahan is a professional artist living in Galway. With an art degree and an MA from Goldsmiths, he won a scholarship to the British School at Rome and a trip to Pompeii prompted him to explore ways of making his own paintings look similarly aged. In your self-portrait, there's a, the palette is quite reduced to blue, very beautiful sort of blues and greys. Yeah, yeah. Now here it's quite contrasting with the red background. Yeah, and there's a the blue painter, and I'm facing a red background, so this is a real challenge. <laughs> and of course, it's not just the colour of your submission that really struck us. It was the crackle. It's like something unearthed in Pompeii. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's funny to say. I spent a long time in Italy, and that's where a lot of the ideas came together. I can see already, though, the tilt of the head and the detail in the eyes. It's already getting that kind of classical approach, you know, like, a, yeah. like a, a figure from the past. Oh, thank you. One thing I don't understand is your checklist. What is that? It's not, it's not a massive thing, it's just a, a book. Look at shadow with shape, think only shape. Crisp edges of cast shadows. Just little notes that come back to the end, so I haven't forgotten, like... But I it says done hair. Freckles. You but wouldn't hair. forget the hair. Yeah, but hair equals late shapes and light. Hair does not equal hair. You don't draw it in strands, you do it in shapes oh, and patterns. Half squint. Oh, so yeah. Does that mean that you're so supposed if I'm to... Taking, if I'm looking at Richard there... And you I might can, like, forget squint to half see. squint if you hadn't written it I, down. No, I haven't even done it yet, so... Well, it's a good job I brought it on. Thank you for getting me my book out. There are just over two hours left to paint before one artist will be chosen to go through to the semi-final. Going over the detail in the eyes, see if I can get them to come alive a bit more. What colour are your eyes? Brown. No, they're actually blue, really dark are blue. They? they are. I've got a lot of love for you, Phoebe, but it worries me that it's taking you two hours to work out my eye colour. That is awful, I assumed. What are they? Are they blue? I might change something. <laughs> <laughs> It's sort of like you tickle it and tickle it and tickle it. It never comes together at the beginning. It comes together further towards the end. So at the moment, we're just painting. Just painting and hoping for the best.
Here at the Wallace Collection, our artists have been painting sitters Nina Sasania, Richard E. Grant, and a very chatty Sue Perkins for two hours. What's this pose saying to you? Is it saying sort of pensive, deep, layered, complex human, or is it just saying tired, perimenopausal woman in hot room? Oh, honestly. <laughs> and as the portraits progress, the judges have been watching. We're halfway through. Mm -hmm. I think they're doing enormously well. But do you have any particular judgments to make at the moment? I think they've all come on a lot so, uh, and in the last hour or so. I think there are a few that are racing ahead for me. I mean, Bill is doing his wax, but he's doing it differently. Mm. Is, it, is it an improvement? It's definitely an improvement because he's using the dots to have the portrait emerge rather than placing the dots on top of something in a decorative way. Well, Phoebe's very interesting because it started green. She's been playing around with redrawing the head and she's the only person who's not using technology and it's becoming better as the day goes on. And what about the pictures of Richard E. Grant then? How do we feel about that? My favourite is Emma Leone's. I mean, she's got a great relationship with paint. There's no palette, she's just working the paint out actually on the canvas, which I think is great. And really good tones coming through. Robin's, well, I mean, you can see his background is a graphic Absolutely. background. Everything's there, the eyes are fantastic. I'm quite interested to see where it goes, whether he can give it a kind of Christmas that he had in this sort of portrait. But it is coming together, and I, and I do feel that it might really reveal itself quite positively. In a portrait, mm. is the stuff that you're particularly good at and stuff that you oh, think, oh yeah. no, I've got to do... Stuff that I'm good at, stuff that I'm... Like I can't I'm... do ears or something. I love an ear. I love oh, an do. ear. I can see that you're good I at ears. I don't like a neck. Necks are a bit of an afterthought, really. You know, they're just holding your head up, really, aren't they? I, I suppose that is true. <laughs> I'm really bad at mouth. Well, I'm not bad at mouths, but they do annoy me. I find it hard to work out whether it's like a convex shape or a concave shape or whether it's going back and going forward. I mean, I I just struggle more with them than noses, because noses don't change with your facial expression, but with mouths, they change so much. So you're starting to put the hair in? Yeah. Do you feel like you're there with the face, or...? Uh, I'm not done with the face. I just want to, like, outline the other features yeah. that I'm probably not going to get time to do today. But just sort of give a sense of... Just give a sense that she yeah. does have hair, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but she has a head. Yeah. Feels okay. Um, fine. I'm just itching to see what they're doing. Yeah, I'm really trying not to. I need a little periscope that I could feed round and have a quick look, but I don't think it's allowed. So, Richard, how has the sitting experience been for you? It's very curious because I've not had any conversation with anybody. Is it the same for the other people sitting today? There is a lot of people working from tablets. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, one could argue that, you know, Vermeer used camera obscura and stuff like that. People have always used the easiest method. OK. Do you think it might be the actor in you just screaming, look at me? Well, there's already look at me just by sitting here and doing this. <laughs> I guess so. yeah. Well, I'm very thrilled to have you here. I'm likewise thrilled to meet you. Oh, well, there you go. So at least we have, at least we have each other. We are <laughs> two 59-year-old duffers. Don't mind me. Will you do this again if you're asked? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just cut this off on it. I suppose because I'm, I'm a very verbal person. I don't to, to be the object of such visual scrutiny is quite weird, but good and quite freeing in a way. I've got to that stage in my life where I just think, you know, this is who I am. You know, let's let's deal with it. Let's put it in oil. Let's hang it in a bog. 30 minutes to go. The thing is, with the painting, you can just keep going and keep going and keep going, and it comes to a point where, you know, you just actually need to stop. The background's quite flat, so I wanted to add a bit of pattern to it, so it looks a bit more interesting. It may be a gamble, but what the heck. <laughs> I'm feeling, like, kind of nervously OK. It's odd how much a single dot can affect a painting. It could either help it or hurt it sometimes, particularly maybe with the expression. If I haven't got it quite right, just a single dot, I'm like, oh, there it is, I got it. Or, or vice versa, I could lose it. It's been 
been mostly Sue's eyes that I've been finding hard still. I mean, sort of fiddling, whether it's good fiddling or bad fiddling, I don't know. But if I don't get the eyes right, you can really let the whole picture down. The eyes, the nice hands corner, they capture the soul of the person. I'd like to give it a bit more substance. That's, the soul hasn't come into it really. That comes in five minutes to go. <laughs> Earlier today, nine artists set about painting the portraits of Nina Sasanya, Sue Perkins, and Richard E. Grant. But their four-hour time limit is nearly up. It's going all right. It's just I didn't get enough time to do certain effects I wanted to do. <laughs> Please, somebody, put the clocks back. <laughs> artists, there are five minutes to go. Right, come on. Come on, just draw the glasses on. Come on, just draw the glasses on. <laughs> it's going to be a push, but I might do it. I'll make every stroke right. I'm worried I'm overdoing it now. <laughs> I sort of ad have adapted my style to be quicker, and now I just kind of want to just start over again. <laughs> Just saying, stop, stop, stop. It's really bugging me now. Oh, 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 I see something. Artists, your time is up. Please put down your materials and step away from your work. <laughs> Finally. At last, the moment has arrived. As a reward for sitting for our artists, Richard, Sue and Nina can choose their favourite painting to keep. Sue, you look remarkably fresh. And considering. finally still, which must really annoy these guys. <laughs> You've finally settled. I know. It's taken me four or five hours, but I feel now I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, um, artists, could you please turn your easels? <gasps> oh. Oh! You are so clever. Four hours. And you've done that. There is something about the staring off. You yeah. look thoughtful. Yes. That can't be true. <laughs> What's great about this is many people have said over the years, you're no oil painting, and now I can say... I beg to differ. It's just all dots, is it? Or is there any line all work? All dots, yeah. It's ama amazing. Art, Sue, so you have to make a decision, of course. Yeah. You have to choose... Which one of these will be forever in your life? I'm just deeply impressed with all of them. It's very... Oh, I am going to... I'm going to go with Phoebe. Well done, Phoebe. <laughs> you see, this person is so ancient and old, I can't recognise myself at all. So they've Come all failed. <laughs> Thank you for giving me so much hair. It's sort of Liberace like. Yeah, it is, I it love is it. a little bit, isn't it? You recognize him? I'm afraid I do. <laughs> yeah. What you've got exactly is what my wife said is unless I smile, I look as if I'm smelling something. None too good. She'll be delighted. As that most approximates what my wife thinks of me, I'd have to choose yours, Em. <laughs> Sorry, boys. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness me, well done. It looks like someone in my family. You? Hair's amazing. I'm me and, a bit and like others. You. That's, uh, that's stunning, look at the... The colours are amazing. It's really beautiful. You look like a real kind, caring, warm, loving Aww. person. How did you do that? I'm not saying that you are. <laughs> Completely different style. And the different, the, the light, the facets of the surface of, of the face. So now you <sighs> choose your very, very favourite of the three. OK. That's kind of tricky. It's this one.
In the privacy of an empty gallery, the judges make a close study of today's finished portraits. I think Em's really captured uh, Richard's disgruntled uh, <laughs> <laughs> look. I'm a bit doubtful about the painting around that, but I think the likeness is fantastic. Yeah, and it's nice to see someone who's sort of really enjoying the paint, sort of mm. pushing it around as well, yeah. I think. You know, Robin does have that graphic design quality. It's quite a compelling thing to look at, isn't it? He does look very kind of handsome and strong. You know, I think he works over a much longer period and actually coming and going away from something. He just didn't have that distance here. I'm very pleased with my portrait, but I do see errors. And I wish I could have paid for a couple more hours, but that's just the way, you know, it's competition. So we'll see. I love it. I think it's very confident. I must say, I, I thought it a pity that she didn't do more, but, and she kept reworking the head, and I thought she was going to mess it up, and she just found it more and more. She's really mm. gone in there. Funnily enough, I think he caught most of the character. Yeah. I think the passages of paint here in the cheeks, particularly around the mouth, are just absolutely exquisite. We didn't get that from him before. This is definitely a development. They've seen my work before, so it'll be interesting to see what they think of it now, because I think I've moved on, and I, it'd be cool to s see if they um, feel the same. I love watching Michaela work. She's a real painter. Her marks are crisp, and I think she really caught Nina's character very well. But the blocking that she did and that she promised was going to be so much a part, I think we've lost some of it, and she over-blended it slightly. I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't, because everybody's got such different styles. I think there's so many good paintings there. I wouldn't like to be in their shoes, really, to be honest. <laughs> to help decide who goes through to the semi-final, the judges first whittle the nine to three. We swap those round. Kate, we swap that one with this one. That's a very strong end, isn't it? We go with those three, can't we, for sure? They just take all the attention, don't yeah, they? Yeah, the strong absolutely. Paintings. But which three have they chosen? Firstly, Emma Leone Palmer. <laughs> And the second is Bill Bone. <laughs> and the third is Phoebe Cripps. <laughs> Commiserations to all those who didn't win, but you have made tremendous efforts and wonderful work, and it's really appreciated. So thank you to you. That was a very crazy experience for me. And um, just walk, working with such lovely people today, it's been a very enjoyable experience. Judges, okay, explain to me how you came to these decisions. Well, Bill was really difficult because, you know, we're familiar with his work, so you have to sort of, bring a fresh pair of eyes and really test yourselves as to why you're keeping him going forward. There are absolutely magical passages of paint on the cheeks and the nose. There's a real likeness in the lips. But the hair is a distraction and it's strange he didn't find a way to give us something there without actually putting in this strange tea cosy. To spend so much time painting and just to be immersed in that kind of art world for a day is good. It makes you want to just go home and paint some more. Maybe not tonight, but tomorrow. <laughs> Right, well, this is a head-on picture of Sue. It was a nice likeness to begin with, and then this afternoon, for me, it really came alive. There's a kind of twinkle in the eye. Yeah, it's that sort of classic brand portrait that you'd want as a record of yourself. We sometimes complain about this kind of school of painting, and the worry is when someone's quite good at a particular style of painting, you worry about who they are as an artist. Mm. And when I saw her submission, I was thinking, well, she's kind of got that, that, that quality. But actually, it was, it, it was her take on it, and it was beautifully, beautifully done. And a bit more contemporary, like there's got one foot in history and one foot in now. I really like this, but there is an element of local councillor. 
It has a formality which the submission doesn't well, I'm have. I'm glad Sue isn't here because I think maybe she has got that sort of inner counsellor in her. Yeah, Alderman Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really tired and, and drained but in a really nice way. I feel like it was an accomplished day and um, it's just it's wonderful to be picked with a three. That's still an honour. The third, Emma Leone. She's an unusual artist for me because you've got this like absolute fascination with the stuff of paint, which you mm. get here with this being the palette. I have to say, I'd prefer these not to be there. It's it's a slightly a device, isn't it? There's something naive about it, that sort of love of the paint and, and wanting to sort of place it all there. But it's charming. Yeah, I've got a feeling that it's a great idea that uh, one day she'll look back and think, mm, yeah. what a very good image of Richard. You speak about it as being a very good likeness. I think she's got something wrong with this part of the face. Spoilen. It looks like it's, it's got this, a this big jowl. This is not how Richard looks. I don't think that matters, but I think it's worth pointing out. No, but we had an interesting idea. I've always thought, you know, we will disagree on style, yeah. but I always took likeness to be an absolute. And actually, in our discussions today, I realised I think something looks very like, and you would disagree with me. I think, oh, God, that's mm. a surprise. I feel very, very honoured. Um, I can't believe it. I feel like my heart's going to jump out my mouth. A crazy day. You know, I've learnt everything I know about art from you three. Yeah. Four. <laughs> uh, you've said of artists before, yeah, they're really, really good, but I kind of know what they're going to give us for the rest of the competition. Do you think that we kind of know what, what Bill and Phoebe w would give us? But there's a sense of Emma Leone of a sort of maverick streak that we don't quite know. I'd go with that. Yeah. I think you're right. I think actually all three of them are really, really good artists. Bill's developed his style. Um, and with Phoebe, you know, she's a really gifted, confident young artist. And definitely, you're right, with Emma Leone, you don't know what's coming next. And that's why they're our top three, because they're all good, strong artists who are definitely going places. It's just really difficult to work out which one you want to follow in this no, particular it's, it's, instance. It's a, great, it's a great top three, I think. Oh, thanks. thanks. But only one of the shortlisted artists can go through to the semi-final. Congratulations to you all on getting this far, but as we all know, only one of you can go through. Yes, the artists that the judges have selected have, and I quote, produce more than a likeness. They captured a sense of vitality that will stand the test of time. And that artist is Phoebe Cripps. Uh, I feel, um, I feel quite strange. I thought maybe I was going to be a bit traditional, maybe a bit boring, I don't know. So that's mind blowing that they chose me. I can't believe it at all. She's obviously uh, very good at, at capturing a likeness. She's, she's got that classical thing going on. It is timeless. Phoebe's portrait was amazing. I kind of had a, you know, an inkling that she might do very well. I think the plan is tonight. I've got to get home um, with Mum. I think probably a bottle of something will get opened, but um, I think just slowly taking it in, keep pinching myself, that's, that's going to be the best bit.